With the new year, a lot of people will be starting new resolutions. That may look like losing weight or spending less money, but one resolution that not many people think of doing, but which is just as important, is getting better sleep. I think this like goal to get better sleep is one that I hear people talk about a lot, but it's one that um, people don't always follow through with because it can be kind of difficult. Dr. Kara Palmer, an assistant professor at Montana State University, has spent the past 10 years of her life studying sleep. In her most recent study, Dr. Palmer sifted through 50 years and over 150 different sleep studies to check the correlation between sleep and mood. Some of like the physical feelings that come along with strong emotions, like, you know, your heart beating, maybe you feel it in your stomach. Um, it was just less of those feelings overall. Um, and then people just generally felt more anxious after losing sleep as well. Emotions were described as being more muted than anything else when low on sleep. Even just losing a couple hours of sleep or even just staying up an hour or two later than usual, it was enough to see effects on, on our sleep mood. Dr. Palmer suggests that a consistent sleep schedule is just as important as consistent amounts of sleep. And we talk a lot about how much sleep you're getting, and that certainly is important. Um, but more and more research is showing that keeping a regular sleep schedule is just as important, if not more important, sometimes. This is still the case if you are trying to catch up on sleep. Even if you feel like you need more, it might be more beneficial to keep it consistent rather than to sleep an extra four hours. Try not to shift your schedule by more than um, like an hour or so in either direction. Dr. Palmer does say a well-timed nap can be beneficial if you need one, but to keep it around 30 minutes and to not take it too close to bedtime so that it affects your sleep schedule. In a similar vein, your bedtime routine should be just like your sleeping habits themselves, consistent. Yeah, I think having a consistent and relaxing bedtime routine can be helpful for everyone. Um, you know, I would say an hour or so before bed is when you can kind of start that preparation. This means winding down, making sure to keep your sleep environment dimly lit, and partaking in a calming activity such as reading. While blue light glasses and night mode on technology can help, it does not eliminate the light that will make it harder to fall asleep from your phones or computers. One of the best tips Dr. Palmer has is to stay out of your bed if you are not sleeping. We start to create those associations where then our bed is no longer just a place for sleep. It's a place where we stay awake and stress about things or we stay awake and our mind is going and we're very cognitively active. Sleep affects pretty much every aspect of our lives, and so it's important to get enough of it. In Great Falls, I'm Tommy Lynch, MTN News.